was saying, I will not deny you. I will stand like you. I will not betray you. Even though the heaven falls, I will stand by you. Jesus took him to the garden and told him to pray. Jesus was telling him, Peter, Peter, if you want to stand like me, you have to kneel like me. You know what happened? Instead of praying, they slept. And when they came to arrest them, Jesus had received strength from the Father. So he stood firm and he was ready for the difficulty. But the disciples ran away. Why? Because they did not pray. They slept. And today, unfortunately, we are asleep. The church is asleep. Let me share this with you. I went to a place for a week of prayer. And the theme was revived to witness. There was a, a theologian who came and he told me, I cannot pray alone. I preach and people are amazed when I preach. People are touched. People weep. I know the Bible. But I cannot pray alone. In fact, I don't pray I only pray when I'm about to stand on the pulpit or when I have an appointment. I cannot pray. I only pray when I have an appointment. My dear friends, in order to stand like Jesus in these last days, and let me tell you, things are going to get worse. Things will not get better. But one thing that may get better that may get stronger is our faith. That's the one thing in these last days that may increase. That's the one thing that is possible to increase. That is your faith. That is your connection with God. Trials will increase. Calamities will increase. Please, help me proceed. Jesus went to the cross full of strength because he had spent time with God. God did not remove the cross. God gave Jesus strength to endure the cross. And Jesus died Friday night. Can you please proceed? The earth trembled at his approach. This is at Gabriel's approach. We are about to land this plane. As Jesus was lying in the tomb, that Sunday morning, Desire of Ages, page 779, the earth trembles at his approach. God had sent Gabriel. The hosts of darkness flee. You see, when at Jesus' tomb, there were demons around the tomb. There were legions of demons around the tomb. And Ellen White mentions that if the devil could prevent Jesus from resurrecting, he would do all that he can. But he placed a lot of demons over there. And she mentions that when Gabriel was sent by God, and when he was coming, the earth was trembling, and that the demons, the hosts of darkness fled. And as he rolls away the stone, Heaven seems to come down to earth. The soldiers see him removing the stone as he would a pebble and hear him cry, Son of God, come forth. Thy father calls thee. They see Jesus come forth from the grave and hear him proclaim over the rent sepulcher, I am the resurrection and the life. As he comes forth in majesty and glory, the angels, the angel host bow down in adoration before the Redeemer and welcome him in the songs of praise. Could you please proceed? That Sunday morning, Jesus resurrected. And Jesus' resurrection symbolizes victory over any sin you think can keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. 
If any person on earth does not inherit the kingdom of heaven, it is because they did not want to. Jesus has made it possible for every person to be saved. We have the Holy Spirit. We have scripture. We have guardian angels that are with us at every second until the day we die. And the angels in heaven are seeking to aid us. The Holy Spirit longs and yearns to fill us. If any person does not inherit the kingdom, it is because they did not want to. It is not God's fault. Could you please proceed? Once again, if a preacher is not praying, he is playing. Once again, and if the congregation are not praying, they are straying. The greatest preacher in the world lived a prayer for life. If a preacher is not praying, he's playing. And if a congregation is not praying, they are straying. Jesus overcame by maintaining a connection with God. Please, you can proceed. Once again. Ellen White says, Love of self, pride, and self-sufficiency lie at the foundation of the greatest trials and discords that have ever existed in the religious world. Again and again, the angel has said to me, press together, press together, be of one mind, of one judgment. Christ is the leader and you are brethren, follow him. In other words, it is pride that keeps us from receiving the spirit. Please proceed. Acts. Allow me to go through the book of Acts for one minute. She mentions that it is because we are not united in Christ, we are not receiving the Spirit. It is because of pride. Acts chapter 1 verse 14 says, 120 were gathered together as they were praying together. That shows unity. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were to get gathered together in one place with one accord. That shows unity. In Acts chapter 3 verse 1 it says that Peter and John went to the house of prayer at the ninth hour to pray at the hour of prayer. In Acts chapter 4 verse 31 it says they gathered together and they prayed and the Holy Spirit came. In Acts chapter 6 Peter says but we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and to prayer. In Acts chapter 7 Stephen dies while praying. In Acts chapter 9, after Paul has an encounter with God, he spends three days fasting and praying. In Acts chapter 10, after praying, Peter is told to go to the Gentiles, and Cornelius receives a vision while praying. In Acts chapter 12, Peter is arrested. The church gathers together in united prayer, one in one accord, and Peter is set free by an angel. In Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that in Antioch, the whole church was gathered together. Prophets, teachers, and Paul and Barnabas were gathered together. The Holy Spirit came and said, separate for me Paul and Barnabas to send to the Gentiles. It began in one accord as they prayed. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. The Bible says in verse 25, they arose at midnight. They began to pray and to sing hymns. They were in one accord as they prayed. In Acts chapter 18, they went, Paul went to Ephesus and he found disciples who had been preaching long th longer than him, but they were not filled. So he prayed for them. They received the Holy Spirit. This is why Ellen White says that a revival need not be expected except in answer to prayer. Please proceed as we close. October 22, 1844, Jesus made his way into the most holy. And the Bible says that he lives to make intercession for us. We are living in the last days. And Jesus is waiting for us to come to him in prayer. Jesus longs to fill us with the Spirit. Please proceed. We have reached the last, the second to the last slide. You know, sometimes if a preacher doesn't mention that, people won't pay attention. But let not your heart be troubled. This is almost the last slide. 
Knees for Jesus are scarred knees. I was giving Bible study to some policemen for about a year and a half. And some of them were graduating, so I told them persecution will break out soon. And they will use you guys to arrest people. And I told them, but when they start persecuting Christians, I want you to remember me. Perhaps you can hide me somewhere and feed me. But take good care of me. And then I told them, but listen, if they tell you to kill Christians, I want to help you out. I don't want you to waste your time killing people who are not Christians. Do not go after those who are quoting scripture, walking with Bibles on their arms. When you are told to go and find Christians, don't waste your time running after people who are quoting scriptures and walking around with Bibles. I told them, lift up their knees. Because a true Christian, a true Christian bears the scars of the great controversy on his knees. Knees for Jesus are scarred knees. Theology without neology will do nothing for us. Could you please proceed? Prayer and the Bible cannot be separated. I don't know if you can read this, but it says, warning, Bible usage can be habit forming. Regular reading of the Bible can cause loss of anxiety and fear and depression and depressed appetite for impatience and anger. Symptoms include increased love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If symptoms persist, just praise the Lord. This is what happens when you take prayer and the Word of God. It is impossible for there not to be a change in your life when you take prayer and the Word of God. The key to revival is not in the preacher. It is in God himself. We are to come to this place to seek God. And when God comes down, we will have a revival. No man can stand in this corrupt world without kneeling before an uncorrupt God. It is impossible. This evening, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me. Before I sit down, I want to offer a prayer. I invite you all to bow your heads with me. Once again, we have come to this place. We have heard God's word. We have done this many times. We have gone to week of prayer after week of prayers, retreats after retreats, camp meetings after camp meetings. But we have not received the spirit as we ought to. Let us plead with God this evening that as we leave this place, we may not leave him in this place. Father, have mercy upon us. Set us free from self. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.